Hello everyone and welcome to Oakman on Racing. I am Rob Oakman and today we're going to talk about the basics of rules. Now I've been officiating for a long time so trying to understand the rules is sort of part and parcel with the job. But also having done this job for a long time I understand that the vast majority of people haven't read the rules. Remember the rule book is how to play the game and the better you understand that rule book the better you can play the game. It is entirely to your advantage to know the rule book better than your competitors. Looking at a rule book can be very intimidating, but all rule books have three basic fundamentals that are involved in how they're put together. The first is future action. The future action is literally the information describing what you can or can't do, what you will or won't do, what you may or may not do, the minimum requirements for you to qualify for something, the minimum requirements for you to be able to participate, those sorts of things. The second part are definitions. Definitions are just for words that have a specific meaning within the game that you're playing. A good example would be blocking. The word blocking means something very different from motorsports to football to hockey to if you work in a body shop. You have to have a definition for those words that mean something specific in the game you're playing. Then the last element is going to be punishment. Now, punishment can be implicit in the information or it can be given separate in, say, like a table or some other part of the rulebook. So let's have a look at the Card Stars Rulebook 2023 9.1, Driver Conduct on the Racetrack. So the future action, no cart, other vehicle or person is permitted on the racetrack and its verges at any time during an event without permission from the race director. There's your information. It's telling you what you can or can't do. In this case, what you can't do. Now for this, you really don't need definitions. It's literally describing the racetrack and its verges. So the property surrounding the racetrack, a reasonable person is going to understand what a racetrack is and the area surrounding it. Plus at racetracks, you're going to have fences surrounding the track surface itself and you're gonna to have to cut through restricted areas to actually reach the track. What happens if you do enter without permission? So in this case, we go down to the penalty guidelines, which is a table that describes a rule and the punishment for it in different sections. We wanna look at the beginning of the guidelines, participant behavior, under violation, disobeying instructions from, refusing to cooperate with, interfering with, or obstructing the actions of an official. If you need to have permission to enter the racetrack and you enter the racetrack without permission, you have disobeyed the instructions of the officials. The instructions of the officials include what's in the rule book. They don't have to directly tell you because it is your responsibility to know the rules in the first place. So looking down at our table in the guidelines, under practice, you would have loss of fastest time. That would be in qualifying, exclusion or suspension. In qualifying itself, minimum is loss of fastest time start at the rear of the first race, exclusion or suspension again. In the heat and pre-finals, we would see start at rear of next race, exclusion or suspension. And of course, in final, scored in last, exclusion or suspension as well. Now, I use the word guideline because these penalties are guidelines. Series rulebooks want to have consistency as much as possible between series running the same rulebook, or at least basing their rules off of a similar rulebook. But again, being guidelines, the race officials have the right to give a different penalty than what is in the guidelines if they feel a different punishment has been earned. Now, of course, rules can come in the written format in, you know, bullet points in lines and stuff like that. They can also come in tables. And a good example is going to be, what is a black flag? So we want to go down to the table and find black flag with cart number. It says, informs the driver to proceed directly to the pits and that they have been excluded from the current session. So we have a definition, we even have a little picture of what a black flag looks like, it describes what it's going to be used for. So what's the punishment if you ignore it? Well, it's right underneath it. A driver who fails to obey this flag after it has been displayed twice will be excluded from the results and additional penalties may be issued. So there's a perfect example. We have the information, the future action, we have the description of what it means, and we have the punishment below it. An example of a rule that has the punishment self-evident within it is going to be race winner, 510. We can look at the display of the checkered flag means the race is finished. The winner shall be the competitor that covers the scheduled distance of a race in the least time or the greatest distance within a scheduled time for a race. 
and at that point receives the checkered flag. It's described to you the minimum requirement for you to be the race winner. So if you don't fulfill those minimum requirements, you're not the race winner. You don't have to earn a punishment away from a race win if you simply haven't fulfilled the minimum requirements. Now, there are situations where you can fulfill that aspect of it, but be disqualified from a race win for breaking another rule, such as if you get a black flag, once you've gotten a black flag or a meatball, that's the end of your race. So I hope this has helped you, give you a couple of examples of how rules work, how you can read them and understand the basics of what they're trying to say, and will help you regardless of what series you're racing. So thank you for watching. If you want more content like this, you can subscribe below. Good luck, and we'll see you at the next race.